In part one, we ended with the time of Homo habilis. The next stage in evolutionary history is Homo erectus. Homo erectus lived 1.8 million to 300,000 years ago, which is almost close enough in time to be called immediate family. Their brain went through another growth spurt and measured 1,000 cubic centimeters. Erectus made larger and more sophisticated tools, like stone axes, and developed the use of fire. Evolution also gave Erectus an arch in his foot. All the previous ancestors were flat-footed and so could not walk or run long distances. Erectus could, and they are the ones who walk out of Africa. Their skeletons are found in the Middle East, Europe, and Asia. Even more importantly, Erectus shows the first evidence of having a concern with realities transcending biological needs. In other words, we have evidence Erectus took part in behaviors not directly related to survival. That evidence comes from the red ochre stones pictured in the slide. These soft stones were scratched to create a powder that we believed was mixed with fat or water to make a paste for decorating themselves. As seen in the picture, some tribes in Africa still use red ochre for the same purpose. If this is true, Erectus painted themselves, showing signs of self-awareness and a symbolic self-image. This may be the beginning of human-like self-consciousness. Homo heidelbergensis lived 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, right up until the emergence of Homo sapiens. Their brains were larger still, almost the size of our own, reaching 1,200 cubic centimeters. They lived in Europe, West Asia, and Africa, and built shelters from wood and rock. They also developed the use of spears and routinely hunted large animals. This stone was found inside a cave in Spain, holding the skeletons of 27 members of Heidelbergensis, dating back 350,000 years. It is highly unusual to find an axe made of red stone, and it was the only man-made item found with the skeletons. The archaeologists conjecture the axe was purposely left with the corpses as a funerary object, and that an axe made from red stone had symbolic meaning. If this is true, the axe is the first evidence ever found of a purposeful burial and associated beliefs about death, implying the existence of some kind of religion. Which brings us to the famous Neanderthals, or Homo Neanderthalus as they are officially known. Now Neanderthals are immediate family. They lived in Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Asia 250,000 to 30,000 years ago, making them our contemporaries. Their brains, on average, were larger than our own at 1,700 cubic centimeters. Semi-nomadic, they traveled in clans of 50 to 100 people. They controlled fire, built shelters, ritualistically buried their dead, and exhibited care for the weak and disabled in their groups. These were highly intelligent people with a sophisticated culture. Neanderthal burial sites show signs of deliberate burial with associated rituals. The corpses were laid out and positioned in their graves, often in a fetal position. The corpses were also sometimes sprinkled with red dye or red flowers laid over the body. Implements or artifacts would be left behind. Neanderthal skeletons also show evidence that they took care of their weak. One skeleton, for example, was of a 40-year-old man with a crushed left eye socket and an amputated right arm who also suffered from arthritis. But the injuries had healed without infection and were not what killed him. That could only happen if he was kept alive and cared for, despite his basically useless condition. This also implies the existence of a moral code that justified keeping alive a non-productive member of the tribe. When you add together ritualistic burials with associated beliefs about death and a moral code to protect the weak, 
it appears the Neanderthals also practiced a form of religion. Due to DNA analysis, we know the Neanderthals were a separate species from modern humans that went extinct. Why they went extinct is unknown. It is possible that as humans encountered the Neanderthals, they killed them off through warfare or through disease. However, recent DNA analysis shows that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens occasionally interbred, and some modern humans have Neanderthal DNA in their system. DNA analysis also reveals that male children from a Neanderthal human mating would be largely infertile. For that reason, it is now suggested that Neanderthals eventually disappeared due to interbreeding and assimilation into tribes of humans. Homo sapiens, meaning us, evolved into existence in Africa about 200,000 years ago. From Africa, we eventually migrated through the Middle East into Europe and Asia, which is where we encountered the Neanderthals. Those first modern humans looked like us with the same brain size of 1400 cubic centimeters and the same body shape. If you dressed them up in modern clothes, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Unlike the Neanderthals, Homo sapiens were prolific artists, and much of what we know about early humans comes from paintings and other artifacts they left in caves. Because of the stable climate inside a cave, these paintings were often perfectly preserved and reveal a complex and highly symbolic culture. While these early humans were technologically less sophisticated, they were fully as intelligent as ourselves. To picture cave people as dumb is a highly inaccurate stereotype. These paintings were done deep inside the caves in remote rooms that could only be accessed by crawling and climbing while carrying torches. For that reason, these drawings were not idle doodlings or graffiti, and were probably connected with their religious beliefs. They commonly depict animals, hunting scenes, shaman, and some were obviously sexual in nature. This appears to be a hunting scene. Horses were a common food, and we can see what appear to be arrows aimed at the horse. This is a picture of a mammoth hunt. In this picture you can see horses, bison, and a pair of fighting rhinoceroses. In some paintings, the contours of the cave wall would be incorporated into the animals to give them a three-dimensional effect. We have pictures of shaman involved in ceremonial dances. The shaman is dressed in a costume made of different animals they hunted. He was obviously a man and is probably doing a dance for a successful hunt. In this slide, the picture on the right is a blow-up of the area within the red square. The shaman in an animal costume is dancing and playing a musical instrument. This painting on a stalactite deep inside a cave is of a woman's vagina complete with an inscribed vaginal slit. You can make out her pubic triangle between two large thighs. Palm prints were also frequently left behind. They would hold dye in their mouth and then blow it out over the top of their hand. It may have been a way to connect with the sacred power resident in the cave. This 30,000 year old footprint from a young boy was left in one of the caves. He could not have imagined what his world would be like 30,000 years in the future, in our day. The same is true for ourselves. Evolution continues, but now it is driven by culture and technology. Rather than our brains becoming bigger, they are being supplemented by machines. Who knows what our world will look like 30,000 years from now? And what will those future starship children think when they look back and study our own society.